you understand this, if you understand nothing, believe this. Between where you are now and eternity, there's only one hope. Only one hope. Only one hope for heaven. Dear unsaved friend, for you tonight, there's only one way to heaven. One way, one hope to heaven. One hope tonight. There's only one stands between you and the great eternity. That is only one breath away. That one hope tonight is not a crucifix. There's many tonight holding on to a crucifix. That only hope tonight is not in a candle either, because there's many depending upon lighting candles to get them to heaven. And it's not in a collar at either. A lot of boys believe today as long as they're a member of a loyal order, they're for heaven. No, sir. No use to you either. And there's many people tonight holding on to creeds, depending on creeds, hoping in creeds. They don't count for eternity. Don't count. Because a crucifix offers no hope. Lighting a candle offers no hope. Wearing a collar at in July offers no hope. Depending on a creed offers no hope. They won't do. And there's many tonight depending upon religion. Depending upon religion, hoping in religion, trusting in religion to see them into heaven, but religion won't do. And there's people reforming their lives over hoping maybe if they change their life, it won't do either. You see, the Bible warns us tonight. It warns us in, in Proverbs 14 and 12. It warns us. The Bible says there's a way which seemeth right unto a man. Boys, it looks right. It feels right. But it's not right because the end thereof are the ways of death. I wonder tonight, dear unsaved friend, what are you hoping in tonight? The Savior never dying soul. What are you hoping in tonight to escape the lost sinner's hell? Because between you, right now and the great eternity, there's only one hope, and there is only one way to me. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 17, you'll find the only one hope there is between you and eternity. The only one way to heaven tonight is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. And here's the only one hope tonight that stands between you and the great eternity. 
It's the cross of Christ. Dear unsaved friend tonight, the cross of Christ is the only hope that stands between you and the great eternity. And the cross of Christ is the only hope you have for heaven. The cross of Christ. You know tonight the cross of Christ is the most powerful thing that ever stood ever in this world. Do you know the cross of Christ, what it can do tonight? What the cross of Christ can do and does, it divides history. History is divided by the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ not only divides history, the cross of Christ divides humanity. It's the cross of Christ tonight that divided two thieves on Calvary's hill that day. It's the cross of Christ that divides the saved from the lost. The cross of Christ divides history. The cross of Christ divides humanity. The cross of Christ divides eternity. It's the cross of Christ that divides hell from heaven. And it's the cross of Christ tonight that divides heaven from hell. I want to pause just for a wee moment I want to ask you this sweet question. Where does the cross of Christ leave you tonight? Nothing divides more than the, than the cross of Christ. And thank God tonight, nothing unites more than the cross of Christ. God wants us tonight to look to the cross of Christ. And God wants us to learn three things about the cross of Christ. Not what the cross can do, but what the cross cannot do. What the cross of Christ can't do. Because do you know tonight there are three things that's impossible for the cross of Christ to do. First thing that's impossible for the cross of Christ to do tonight, it's impossible for the cross of Christ to deny God's love. That's one thing the cross of Christ could never do. It could never deny the love of God. Even though tonight the cross of Christ was a shameful thing, even though the cross of Christ was a cruel thing, even though, friend, the cross of Christ was, was a painful thing, the cross of Christ doesn't deny God's love. It displays God's love. Do you remember that day in Luke 23, verse 33? Do you know what we read? We read there, and when they came to a place called Calvary. You know, Calvary was a real place. When they came to a place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And then we read this. And he cried and he prayed, saying, Father, Father, forgive them, 
They know not what they do. Do you know, dear unsafe friend, when they were driving the nails through his hands and driving the nails through his feet, there was nothing only love within the heart of the Lord Jesus as they nailed him without mercy to the cross. Do you know something? There was not one ounce of hatred in his heart for those that crucified him. All there was was love. The cross tonight, the cross of Christ, cannot deny God's love because the cross of Christ displays it. Kneel to the cross of Christ tonight is the price of God's love. We read, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. You know, friend, this evening he gave his only begotten Son knowing that he would go to that cross. He gave his only begotten Son knowing that he would be crucified. He gave his only begotten son knowing that he'd been mocked and scorned. The cross of Christ tonight, the cross of Christ, it's impossible for the cross of Christ to deny God's love. You know what the cross tells me tonight? You know what it teaches me? God loved the world of sinners lost, ruined by the fall, salvation full at highest cost, he offers free to all. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown? Never! Because the cross of Christ displays God's love. The cross of Christ could never deny God's love. The second thing that's impossible for the cross of Christ to do, the cross of Christ cannot and will not defend our sin. No, no. The cross of Christ could never defend our sin. You see the cross of Christ tonight? As it stands silently on Calvary's hill. Do you know what the cross of Christ teaches? It teaches that we were born sinners. The cross of Christ declares tonight that we are without hope. The cross of Christ teaches us tonight that man is lost. The cross of Christ declares that man is on the road to hell. The cross of Christ tonight teaches and declares that you're guilty before God. Tell me this tonight. The cross of Christ this evening how does it affect you? Because the cross of Christ must affect you tonight because the cross of Christ is the world's conscience. The cross of Christ is the conscience to this world. You see, unsaved friend tonight, the 
cross of Christ doesn't defend sin. Thank God tonight it destroys sin. Because on that cross, on Calvary, you can tonight behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of this world. Because on that cross at Calvary, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, it was on that cross He bore our sins in His own body on the tree. He didn't go to the cross for the fun of it. He didn't come to the cross to give us an Easter story. He went to the cross because of your sin, because of mine tonight. You see, the cross of Christ cannot defend sin. It's the cross of Christ that brings your sin before you. And it's the cross of Christ that brings my sin before me. Do you know tonight the lesson you need to learn? The wages of sin is death. And if you're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, I'm going to, tell, going to tell you something now, dear friend. You have a death sentence above your head. And it's not an ordinary death sentence that you have hanging over your head. It's an eternal death sentence. Because tonight of sin. But the cross of Christ tonight, not only beckons that all men are sinners. The cross of Christ tonight is the place where sin was dealt with. It's there tonight where sin is taken away. In his book, Written in Blood, Robert Coleman tells the story of a young boy and a young girl, a young boy whose sister had a very strange blood disease and desperately needed a blood transfusion. The only hope that this wee lassie had was to have a transfusion from someone who, who suffered and conquered this disease. And this wee fella, her brother, conquered the disease two years prior to her. What made this special was because this wee fella had the same rare blood group that she had. The doctor said to the wee lad, Johnny, you called him Johnny. Tell me this. Would you allow Mary to take your blood? Because it's the only way she'll ever be healed. It's the only chance she has to survey. He hesitated. He didn't know what to do. And his lower lip trembled. And his voice was shaky. And he said, All right, she can have my blood. The arrangement was made, and both of them were wheeled into the hospital ward and the nurse come over and inserted the needle into wee Johnny's arm. As he sat and smiled at his sister across the way, he, he looked down and saw his blood, his blood flowing through the tube. 
and suddenly the smile faded. And the silence was broken when we, Johnny, looked up to the nurse and said, Nurse, am I going to die soon? And the nurse looked down and says, Johnny, you're not going to die. We just now have enough blood to do the job. You see, at the very start, we, Johnny, thought he was going to die. That's why he hesitated. I say, wasn't we, Johnny, brave? He was prepared to lay down his life for his sister. On the cross of Christ tonight, we can all see one who gave his blood. He gave more than his blood. He gave his life. Because do you see his blood tonight? His blood tonight is the answer for your sin's problem. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. That cleanses from all sin. Oh, the cross of Christ, it cannot deny God's love. The cross of Christ cannot defend sin. Thirdly, the cross of Christ cannot disown salvation. There's a lot of things I don't understand about the cross. But there's one thing I do know. And I do believe. And I do understand. The cross of Christ tonight is the way of salvation. The hymn writer says, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way than this. I'll ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. I can say tonight, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my sin was the blood applied. Glory to His name. You know what else I can say tonight? I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross He took me in. Glory to his name. The cross of Christ tonight. It's the only hope between you and the great eternity. The cross of Christ tonight is the only way to heaven. But there's one thing more important than the cross of Christ. It's the Christ of the cross. It's Christ you need to me. It's Christ you must trust in me. It's Christ you must turn to to me. Because without him, there's no hope. I trust you'll be wise to me. Come to his cross. Come tonight as a repentant sinner. Put your trust in him who alone can, who alone must, who alone will. See him. May God, by his grace, find you at the cross tonight. Our closing hymn this evening